then let's uh, we deal with chapter 9, chapter 10 of Acts, Acts chapter 10, verse 1. Let me share something today and make some, some corrections. Are you in chapter 10? Are you in chapter 10 of Acts? Acts chapter 10, are you there? Okay, verse 1. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, next to everybody, a devout man, and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much arms. Mark that what? He gave what? And what? He gave what? And what? And pray to God all And pray to God when? Once in a week? Once in a month? Verse 3. He saw in a vision, a counter. Evidently, about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming to him and saying unto him, Cornelius, verse 4, when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thy arms have come up for a memorial before God. Verse 5, everybody, now send men to Joppa and call for one Samuel, whose son name is Peter. You know, look up now. You no, know, I, I made a statement. I said, each time there is an encounter, there are people that God will raise to supply resources, because an encounter is designed to give birth to an assignment. Example was Paul and Ananias. When Paul had an encounter with God, God spoke to Ananias about Paul. Go and pray for Saul. In other words, Ananias had what Paul needed to carry out the task. So each time there is an encounter, there are people who are strategically positioned to supply you with the necessary required resources for the next phase of your life. So we can see that God spoke to this man, sent for who? Sent for who? For Peter. Who did God ask him to come and pray for Saul? Ananias. So each time there is an encounter, there are people. So I pray for you that as you enter new mode from next tomorrow, may you meet such people. Yeah. Oh, that event is too cold. Yeah. May you meet such people. Yeah. Okay, let me make a comparison. Now, this man was born. This man was, he had the fear of God, but he, he never had union you know, with Christ. Hello? Am I right? So it tells you that there are people who don't believe in Christ now, but they fear God. There's a difference between having the fear of God. We have some people, we have some Muslim people who who, if you relate with them, you can see that these people have the fear of God. How many of you know that? And number two, there are people who don't even go to church and mosque. But if you talk with them, you can see that these people, they have to an extent the fear of God. These men are close to salvation. Hallelujah. So this man, he was a devout. He feared God. Number two, he gave. He did what? Number three, he prayed always. Then in a vision, a counter. God appeared. And what did God say? Your givings, your arms, and your prayers have come up to me as a memorial. It tells you that giving prayer is critical when it comes to intimacy with God. Oh, hallelujah. He said, you, can, can, God, can God say that of you that your arms have come before him as a memorial? Can God boast of your giving? Can God notice your giving? Now, if God is to meet you like he met Cornelius, can God say you're giving? Can God, can God testify about your arms, about your giving? He said your giving and your prayer have come up before me as a memorial. Don't forget, this man, this man feared God, am I right? This man was righteous, but he never had, he has, he has never benefited from the salvation purchased by Christ's blood. Hello. And, and, and why God appeared to him was to open the door of that salvation through Peter. Therefore, every encounter with God leads you, one, to knowing Christ, two, to growing in Christ, three, to sharing your faith with others, four, to advancing the gospel of Christ. Any encounter that Christ is not the focal point, there is no encounter. Any encounter, anything you do that is not Christ, it's not Christocentric, that is not from God. Every encounter from God, number one, it leads to what number one, knowing Christ. After this, did you know Christ? Yes. Am I right? Because Peter came and preached who? 
and preach Christ to him. And the Bible says, both him and his entire family got saved. So every encounter with God, it leads to knowing Christ, number two, to growing in Christ, number three, to sharing your faith in Christ with others, number four, to advancing the gospel of Christ. Now come on, say every encounter with God, it leads to knowing Christ, to growing in Christ, to sharing my faith in Christ with others, and to advancing the gospel of Christ. Hallelujah. This man feared God, but he never met Christ. Hello. He was holy, but he never had an encounter with Christ. So in a vision, a counter, God appeared to him. He said, your arms. In other words, he should say to you that your giving can create an environment for you to have an encounter with God. That's very powerful. Oh, come on. What did I say? Because God is always noticing givers. The truth is that givers ensure that God's purposes are not truncated on earth. What did I say? Givers ensure that God's purposes are not truncated on earth. Regardless of who the man, what the man does, whether he's a Muslim man or whether he's an unbeliever, in as much as releasing resources is to fulfill God's purpose. Is that okay? So giving is critical. You know, that this match they play, this African Cup of Nations. I was happy that Senegal won. I was, I was praying for them. After Nigeria lost, I started praying for, for Senegal. Uh, I, I, of course, if I tell you if I Senegal to Nigeria, I'm a stupid man. I wanted my own to win, but since we've lost, and I'll tell you why I wanted Senegal to win. It's because of money. Money, as it stands today, is the most generous African footballer. Yes or no? Yes. No African player. And the funny thing, money is not, it's not, it's not a big enough among the big players. Am I right? If you compare, it's not a big enough. Money is the most general. So when they will pray, I say, God, for the fact that this man is given to people in Senegal, please let them win. Because of money, let them win. The so do you still give it, give it and pray for someone that doesn't know me? Now, money was given 100 euro to everybody in his village. Money, money gave scholarship to best students in the village. Money gave money, he built mosque, he built school, he built hospital. He made a comment as so much like, he said, why should I live in London in, in UK when my people are suffering in Senegal? He said, he said, what should I? He said, he said, he said, this money I have is to take it back. No wonder the president said I could. If there's any man I would like to hand over to his money. Can, can you imagine that, the, that, that because of the volume of his, his arms, the president is feeling nobody that is capable to become president lack money? Hello? Hello? Sir? When, when giving is not in place, purposes are truncated. This is very powerful, sir. So, somebody gave a prophecy that, that I see an Arab country winning the match. I mean, winning the cup. I said, okay, look, look, me, I will not prophesy. But God, because of money's giving, <laughs> let him, let him. So, I was, what did you see? And the map prophecy came to pass. It was remaining just that last one. Praise the Lord. When money lost penalty, I said, God, for the sake that is given, let him win. No, look at it though. What concerns me for, I'm not talking about Senegal, I'm talking about one man. Why? Because of what he is doing. And they won. Praise God. God will so much bless us that will touch humanity with our resources. There's an encounter that will lead to millions. Oh, that man is too cold. Yeah. That man is too cold. Yeah. There's this guy that play with a uh, with Kano and they carry that kind of the season. Is it Olympic? Yes. yes. And the guy was doing a good work in Enugu. What is his name? Kingsley. And, and, and when they won the match, you remember what I put about evil? There is an evil that falls on men suddenly. You remember, you remember that message? If not, how can somebody rose up to that peak of life and he came up to a new group that is doing a taxi driver? No, 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 no. 
that evil will not fall on you. In the name of Jesus. And somebody saw him and somehow tweeted. I mean, I mean most of us know about it. And the next time, he said the guy, how many? Two million. Why will why is it that it's only the Muslim that are forced to give to, to people? You know, my uncle will come it was the guy was the one that carried Kano on his neck when he won the match. Look at Emo State, look at Enugu, the Musa. And one of the most highest give out footballer in Nigeria is Musa. His record. My question is that but unbelievers shouldn't give more than us. We should, but you know what? But we have some believers who can give their life. And that's why I'm praying for you. May God bring you more than the status. So that your giving can be fed more. Oh, that the man is too cold. He said, your arms, your giving has come before me as a memorial. Can God take notice of your giving? I don't know that I'm, I'm teaching you today. Can God notice your giving? You know, that prayer you prayed, that prayer you prayed, I don't to pray it. You know why? God spoke to me. I am visiting our Sunday services. Mark it and see that. Something will happen dramatically. There will be a major financial shift that our brain can't explain it. Oh, that the man is too poor. In the name of Jesus. So for Cornelius, he came and he was what? Praying. So Prayer can also create an environment for you to have an encounter with God. And each time an encounter takes place, like I said, is to lead you to knowing Christ and to growing in Christ and to sharing your faith in Christ with others. Come on, am I really communicating that? Am I teaching good today? Okay, let's make a comparison. This is very important. Saul, what was Saul doing when God met him? At, okay, at what circumstance did God meet Paul? At the circumstance of going to kill him, right? Yes. Now, at what circumstance did God meet this man, Cornelius? At eh? giving a what? Follow me now. At what circumstance did God meet with Paul chapter 9? At the circumstance of going to kill him. So this is important now. God can appear in any circumstance to meet with you. Whether negative or positive, what does it? God can appear in any circumstance to meet you, whether it is positive or. But if God meets a man in a negative circumstance, that circumstance should be disregarded. God should be promoted. No, I'm okay. Yeah, yeah, you're getting me now. Don't forget, at what? All of them had a contact with God, am I right? One had an encounter on his way to go and kill. Then one had an encounter with God. Why? Why he was praying. So I said, when God meets with any man in a circumstance, if that circumstance is negative, it should be disregarded only God should be promoted. Because if we are to go by the circumstance that God meets men, it means we should go and kill so that God will meet us. <laughs> so this is where the church build arrows from. The church always want to promote the circumstance that God appeared and meet with a man. And not all circumstances should be should be held as a practice. Not all circumstances. And it's unfortunate for we pastors that we promote any circumstance that God appeared, making it as the basis for the encounter. No. Oh, come on. Am I making some points to that talk? Or shall it be a gay man? Because if you are promoting that that something made something to happen, then we should, we should preach to our members. If you want God to meet you, La Paul, look for who to kill. Would that be a good message? No, what I mean, literally speaking, that's what it's supposed to be. Because Paul was, was okay, this is very powerful now. Do you know that a prostitute can meet a rich man and marry her and, and change? But if, if another prostitute says that because this lady met a rich man in prostitution, and she too, she will keep the position, she will die. Oh, come on. Hello. So, if the circumstance is negative, it should be disregarded and promote God who made that person in that circumstance. Because I, I've, had, I've met some ladies who say, ah, this lady, this lady, she's in position, and she met, and she met this rich man. Okay, you know, you know, the devil can be very stupid. Okay, let me too keep doing it. Maybe I will meet 
the man that she met. No, it doesn't happen that way. What you need is not the circumstance that produced the encounter. It is the God who met her in that circumstance. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then, number two, two correction. Where did God meet with Paul? In Damascus. So, the place of encounter should not be promoted at all. But God should be promoted in that place of encounter. What did I say? The place where God meet a man is not as important as God who meet that man in that place. Come on, say the place that God meet a man and change his life is not as important as God who meet the man in that place. Hello, and this, and I wish, I wish the Yoruba nation can have this understanding, especially CAC people who who are who are worshiping Babalaya where God met him. Hello, but Babalaya brought a great movement in Africa, not that about it, but unfortunate, hear me, sir. As of when God used the guy was not schooled, but you see. If God, hear me, if God want to do anything in Jikwe now, God can use any man regardless of his feet. Because to God, his purpose is more important at that time than whoever that is being used. So the man that was available was Baba, Baba Lola, am I right? And, and the guy had some mysterious, some encounter that cannot be explained by sense. So it's being said that where, where he stayed and prayed, after some years, you could see, see the spot of that is leg. The spot, it's footprint. You could see it. I mean, yeah, even today, people are still going to that mountain. Where God met Paul is not as important as God that met God in Damascus. So don't go to Damascus for a counter. Go to God. Oh come on. Oh hallelujah! You, you didn't get me now. So imagine if if this place is to be in Nigeria, I can assure you Damascus will be a place of prayer. Because we say it was in Damascus that light came. So let me go to Damascus. Damascus does not produce light. It is God that produced light in Damascus. Oh my God. Somebody shout a big amen. And what we do now in Africa, we tend to promote the circumstance, the environment more than God. God is constant. Damascus is not constant. Hello. So what's the lesson here? Number one, he met Paul in a negative circumstance. Going, how would God meet a man that is going to go and kill? He met Cornelius while he was praying. And I said, if the circumstance is positive, then it should be kept as a practice. What did I say? If it is what? It should be what? It should be constantly kept as a but if it is negative, it should be disregarded. Oh, am I teaching good at all? Oh, am I really communicating at all? Shall it be amen? amen? And there is this lady, there is this lady in Yoruba land before. Is it, it should be in the, in 1920. What's that name? I can't remember the name. What popular girl? What's that name? Okay, I, I'll tell you next one. Here. She actually had, there was this sickness like pandemic that happened at that time. And, uh, and you know, God is awesome, sir. You know, God I just come here now and speak to this pulpit to start talking. That is God. <laughs> but you see, when this pulpit talks to you, your focus is not this pulpit. Your focus is to be God. Because this pulpit is not constant to address a situation, but God is constant. Yeah, yeah. Oh, come on. So this lady, in that serious situation, she told them that rain will fall the next day, and it and, and it rained. It rained. It it rained, and, and she said, "Use that water and bathe with it. The illness will disappear." And they saw the miracles. Praise God. And the next day, people still carry bucket for the rain to fall again. Now, when we begin to when we begin to put our attention on places that God moved, is we are gradually opening the door to falsehood in the church. May we not use what God has done for mankind to become evil to mankind. Yes, oh my God. I don't know somebody is getting it. Yes, I, I wouldn't really complicate it now. Yes, so Damascus is not as important as God who met God in Damascus. 
Now, Israel is not as important as God who made, who brought Jesus to the world through Israel. Because if you are to go by that, it means any man who has not gone to Israel cannot see God. So how many can go to Israel? Hello? So if you hear of any move of God anywhere, in any man, remove your attention from the man, from the circumstance, from the place, and put your focus on God. That way will preserve truth and error will not be allowed to enter into the body of Christ. Oh, come on. I will teach you good now. Come on, say Damascus. It's not a place for the power of God. But God is where his power is being fed. So I said, if the circumstance is negative, what do you do? Okay, now let's come to Cornelius. Was his circumstance positive? So we should make it a what? A practice because it was a positive experience. Number one, he did what? Number two, he did what? He cared. So giving and prayer are practices that should be done constantly. Oh, praise God. Come on, say giving and prayer are practices that should be done constantly. Don't forget, this is very powerful, sir. There are some guys that are coming up on social media. I have no doubt about their calling, but I have one problem with them. You see, when people try to present their experiences with God, the church members is wrong. Because we will not have the same experience, but we will have the same God. So, I'm not just comfortable that some young guys on social media, yes, but they're anointed. They, they, I can feel it inside me, they're anointed. But what they do in their preaching is to promote their experiences with God. God is constant. Experiences are not constant. Oh, hallelujah. I tell you, I pray for six hours. I didn't say God. I didn't say that somebody can pray for one minute, you will still meet God. Yes. Hello. Example. What was Paul? What was Paul doing that God met him? Was he praying? Was he reading the Bible? No. Now God met him on one condition because I said to you that Peter and the rest didn't have in-depth knowledge of redemption. And God wanted a man. I, I, I told you something I read in, in, in a man's book in America. He said, the gospel might you to John. He called it the photograph of Christ. Mm. But post epistle is extra. Mm. So you are extra epistle Paul, and, and what photograph the gospel. Am I right? So God needed someone that will unveil to humanity the exact thing he has accomplished for man through Christ. I hear me. Nobody could do that job except Paul. And because of his background. But Paul was not praying because of his purpose. And the purpose is to ensure that Christ is being made known in other times. God met with Paul. So God met with a man, whether he's praying or not, because of his. Don't tell me what? Not the man's purpose, what God wants to do at that particular time and place. He can meet with anybody regardless of what he is. Come on, say, when God's purpose is at the verge of expression, God can meet with anybody regardless of the place, regardless of the person. Oh, hallelujah. Are we teaching good today? So if God is to take note of your offerings, can God say like to you, like Cornelius, your offerings have come to me as a memorial? That's my prayer. That's my prayer for you. Make prayer also a factor. But hear me, I will share some powerful revelation here. Don't forget, I said to you that Cornelius feared God, but Cornelius never met with Christ. And, and God's ultimate plans are wrapped up in Christ. And God wanted this man to enjoy the fullness of what he has done for mankind through Christ. And, and in his prayer, God appeared. And what, what, what did God say? Send for Peter. Peter was supposed to take the gospel to the Gentiles. But Peter had a major problem. Peter was a confirmed Judaist person, even though he was saved. Peter still had the element of Judaism. But 
But the one that ha have it more is James. If you read the book of James, you will see that to the Jews in abroad, to the Jews here, yeah, to the Jews here. Yeah. <laughs> so Jews, um, James was more concerned about the Jews. Remember the argument between Paul and Barnabas and the other Jews in chapter 15 of, uh, of, of Art. Am I right? They were arguing. Some believers said, if you are not circumcised, you are not saved. Paul said, no, circumcision is not the thing. It is the circumcision of the heart. Sharp argument that they have to come before the church council in Antioch. And, and I'm summarizing chapter 15 of Art. And two men spoke. Yeah, I mean, it was not coincidence that it was James and Peter that spoke. Number two, and it was not coincidence that Peter spoke first. I will tell you why. Look at me. Chapter 15. So when Paul and Barnabas and the other group appeared before the church council, Peter stood up. What did he say? He said, Men and women, let's not put burden on these people. Both we and our fathers who couldn't even keep the law, they are pure by their faith in Christ. They are what? Because the other group were preaching that your purity is based on what you do. And Paul said, no, your purity is based on what Christ has done. As you relate with him, you manifest his nature. Oh, come on. Oh, I'm already communicating now. So when Peter spoke, the next person, it was James. James said, okay, he endorsed what Peter said. But he said, as you go, it was in that verse that Jehovah Witness built up the doctrine of not, of not what? Of blood transmission is forbidden. Am I right? It was in James's statement that they built up that, that uh, doctrine. James said, if you go, absent yourself from food sacrifice to idol. Number two, absent yourself from sexual immorality. Number three, I'm, I'm blood. And Jehovah's Witness only picked that word out of context and said that it is it is written in scripture that we shall avoid blood and but that's not what, what James said because the Jews have had of blood yeah. now even though that era has ended James was still having that Jewish mentality yeah. oh come on I'll come back to that yeah, I'll come back to that let us do it here so God said send for Peter and Peter did not am I right did, did he say for Peter and God knew that Peter will not come to this man's house. Oh, this is very powerful, sir. Any man that has what you need, and there are reasons that will make him to come to you, may God take that thing off his mind. Amen. Oh, that means to cool. God knew that God wanted to bless a man with salvation through Christ. And, and God wanted to use Peter to do that. And God knew that Peter had the wrong definition on the Gentile nation. That if it is not corrected, this man's desire will not be achieved. So while, while he was sleeping, I'm summarizing in no time, while he was lying down, the Bible says he saw a very big basin and many animals in it came down from heaven. Three times. Peter, arise and eat. And he told God, don't you know that it's forbidden that we Jews don't eat what is unclean? He was preparing him for Cornelius because he was already seeing Cornelius as unclean, even though it was God's plan for him to receive Christ. So when he saw that vision three times, as soon as he woke up, those men that were sent by Cornelius knocked and he said, We are looking for Peter. He said, I'm here. And when he came to the house of Cornelius, he said, I wouldn't have come to your house if not for the vision I saw. Because you know it's against for we choose to have an encounter with you Gentiles. Now this is a message. Who appeared to Cornelius? Mm -mm. That's right. If you read that, when, when Paul, when Peter was thinking not to go, the Bible said, the Spirit told him, don't hesitate. Am I right? Now, who gave Peter that vision? Who appeared to Peter? The, uh, the engineer. Am I right? Who gave him the vision? God. And the Spirit said what? Don't what you hesitate. hesitate. Hear me? For these three heavenly personalities, 
and he said, and then sat a certain man at least in his feet, being a crippled from his mother's womb, who never had walked the same hard point speed, who steadfastly beholding him, for God had said that he had failed to be what? For angels to have the Lord was set on the feet, and he lived for the spirit to tell Peter, don't hesitate, because the one that the Christ, don't forget the fish, don't forget the elephant. What is what? How if Paul prayed for the woman, he has faith in it because of what he was preaching. Oh my God. And when Paul laid his hands on the man, he said, The man said, It's little. Now it tells you how important is Jesus Christ. Open your mind and let your faith be clear. And the Spirit is powerful. It's easier for the pastor that we have not to pray for you. It. Amen. Like if you give the pastor much job, if you don't have faith in Christ, I'll be dealing with some issues. Paul said, Only that man, I will do with the Christ. Because Paul saw in the man that he has faith. Each time faith arises, God has no choice. Christ's spirit in Africa churches. Amen. 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 Come on, say, I have Don't hesitate. Oh, come on, say, I have faith. Because in a savage to Christ, my to faith has risen up. Preach. Amen. He to you and the and his prayer. And the man was healed from that infirmity. What's the message? Christ, 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 Christ is and the and message. For you Before I proceed here, you shall and I will discuss with my friend in my story. Anything that has kept you let's pray for Africa churches. For 18 years, for 15 years, for 10 years, for 5 years, you are not living this service the same way. Come on, say, never. You are not living this service the same way. Anything that has kept you back. Hello. All this work by the power of God, uh, you shall receive friend. your miracles in Jesus' name. So when Jesus was teaching in the synagogue, even like I am teaching now, and the Bible says he saw a woman who him, who had the family sincerity, is a woman of God. We have suffered. Who has something that can be for a person? Boy, if I will be in this world, I will be in this It's not quite my boss. It's not my boss. I'm going to be pastor. But thank God that he had attended the service he said, when Jesus he was said, teaching. There's something I did to Hello. It will not pause. He said, not I am ashamed of the no, gospel of God. For it is the power of God. It is the power of Something that is the power of God. It is not the power of God. the gospel is not the power of God. God sees and God heals. God delivers. May you be the power of God when it comes to salvation. So as I'm teaching right now, whatever is your place. You know, the problem with the church is that we come the to the church with no that that married, And that's what I would like to do medicine. Ask the man to go and, and join court. And, and that's why you must do all you can to get this. To get attention. Let something rise in your face. With the mad woman. Like that when I was people. That it was and that the God saw in him that, that he had faith. She was doing that. What the body? She was playing with the car. Really that when somebody is coming, bad woman, and the man will see. But the she was the one. Everybody that knows no, women have one problem. Right? What women, do they do? They pray for the woman that in faith to rose as a result of what they want to preach. So your faith as a result of how God says this is very well. No, only Jesus can no, like change my life. I like to say the man of God. So my faith in Christ as a result of God's word is critical for my healing, for my blessing, for my prosperity. Somebody is offering you. Come on, say I believe. Women's joy. Come on, say I believe. As she was in that service, that Jesus was preaching. I'm not talking about the service. There's a woman I believe about you. Not this woman here. My God, I'm not talking about the Christ. Was he made to go? Come on, say hallelujah. Shall it be given? And when he saw her, he called on her. Oh my God. Jesus has noticed you on the 28th so day when of February. So, when my friend told me last week, I said, Man of God, he called the wife. He said, The wife and is what has been by the cat. I will shake over that people are coming. His mouth will go and do it. Go and do it. Imagine if she had said no. That is what you do. The woman, I can assure you, this man will have done so. So, when they couldn't get the man who was in that chamber, he pushed on you immediately. In that chamber, immediately. Baba, she was a bad girl. She couldn't walk straight before. She was serious. Her life was slow by the same time. That encounter in that service brought her a miracle. That 
you yours to your mouth. Will be the same. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. And when and the Bible says, and she became spirit up, she was giving praise to God. You shall praise God. Yeah. You shall give glory to God. Next Sunday you will thank God. Next two weeks you will thank God. And she was giving glory to God. Why? A tedious infirmity was terminated. Hallelujah. If you read this translation, it says she was handicapped. I love you. Handicapped means to be unable. I'm not careful in that thing. You can be physically handicapped. You can be mentally handicapped. You can be financially handicapped. Handicap is handicapped. So whatever area you are handicapped, whatever area you are let me go. But this God woman didn't leave the service with the same situation. Moment, Jesus said, the woman has to have you and lose that. Lose that, that is a prayer I will pray for our family. Our families you are loose from this family. Yeah. Yeah. Woman, yeah. thou yeah. are yeah. loose yeah. from yeah. that struggle. Yeah. Man, you, that, I'm going to speak yeah. the exact yeah. words yeah. Jesus spoke. Yeah. And that situation yeah. cannot yeah. be the same. Yeah. All I need yeah. from you is yeah. your faith yeah. in Christ. Yeah. Yeah. For the many people, have what? And the Bible he says, so, when she was watching, so that was this Peter did not want Jewish to priest. go. Who was angry? The God that Jesus healed the pray, woman from the as Sabbath. As we see much and first, first next to me, as work. many people seven who have the work, you can come need other days and get your advance in your life. Financially, your life. Financially no, because spiritually, was may God have you. Because he was angry that Jesus healed the woman from the Sabbath. In the mighty name of Jesus, may God appear to them in their visions. Okay, this very powerful now, please. It's very prophetic now. Why did God appear to Peter? Praise God. Because he wanted Christ to be what? Religion is so far to it. I'm asking a question. That thing you want to me. How did somebody be angry that a woman that was banned for 18 years? When you are working now, if God will turn around things for you, you can he promote Christ in your community? community? Is to let them know the the that the job you are looking for, if it happens eventually with Christ, the promoter, if you are to God, if Christ is blessed, now before I came, you have the rest of the Sabbath day. But when I come, people shall be visited by God for the same reason. In the name of Jesus, somebody shall be given a way. Make them mad at our workers. I will leave that from Sundays on that Sabbath. I will give you on the Sabbath day. May the man that want to bless you, may you not have a wrong feeling about you. No human being is a very wicked person. Man that want to bless you, the people you think that will love you, maybe your enemies. That said, the person that came, they can be so sick of this curse in the heart of the man. Because I was shooting for you. She came for me a line. Okay, let me give you a Bible example. That had a promise for us in Eden, and she was as powerful as David was. She came from a lineage that is supposed to enjoy God's blessings, and she wasn't here. When the man who said that he was found, he was found. He came with an unction. He might as well this morning. When he became a celebrity, then he bought him a house with a lot of money. I swear to you, by the power of God, that is in Christ Jesus, you are set loose. You are liberated. You are free. In the name of Jesus. The remedy is to go. Come and say, I am liberated. Come and say, I am free. Come and say, I am liberated. In the name of Jesus. Woman, thou art loose. Oh, glory to God. Take that guy. He is under power. What did you tell him? He said, he said, that guy you have, you know, everybody's he's woman, thinking woman. Wow. that wow. has yourself as long as you have you wow. to that wow. wow. at loose wow. from wow. the wow. eternity. Wow. Wow. And he was telling David wow. because, wow. 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 because he was wow. feeling wow. bad wow. that this guy was a judge forever. I want to prove for you. Hello? So when 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 the people shall appear, oh my god, David did the most crazy things. When but David Jesus had this thing, David did not even inquire for the people. David collected the land of this guy and gave it to this man. You from that infirmity. What did I say? God would lose you from, from that situation. David collected the people of the land God would and gave it to you when the people should appear to that amen is to come. David said, Why are you letting this man down? 
Uh, uh, when I and why was she moved? Because she attended a service that Christ was teaching. It's the point of how we come that we go. We are at a service where God's word is taught. It's a church. And it we got. I wish self pressed on him. Let him have it. Let's you have to take it with little by little. Let's not just put out here. We can deal with some issues with it. Praise God. I'll teach on that next Sunday. Oh, hallelujah. Let me just round up for you. Oh, come on. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I didn't want to pick you up. I want to explain that you can we can focus on this point right now. Are you saying that the woman thou art loose? Come and say I'm loose. Woman thou art loose. Hallelujah. I see freedom in the heart today. In this class. I see, I see men who have stayed too long in a particular sickness, like in a particular problem. Hello, families, hear me? Your families have been going through one issue or the other, year in, year out. Let this not go through. Oh, come on. Let this not go through. Let this not go through. For how many years was she bent more? In three years, Satan is waiting for us to pray now. Hallelujah! And you are praying for anointing the house today. Right? You remember that you have the testimony of what I'm here for? The story that God what? The Lord is having right now. Oh my Lord. God, as we pray for each family. Oh my God, peace shall begin to turn around. Yeah. Uh, you push is Jesus brought up? Yes. That to this one we see, oh my God, that Sunday service was powerful. Am I right? Yes. We've never yeah. had service like last like Sunday. Oh my God. Those birds that I saw. Okay, okay, those so that I saw you, we can put from verse uh, the after service, we couldn't do office. We couldn't do office. Go to office. Then, uh, we've never had four service. So it's a beautiful black Sunday. That's what we're saying. The spirit, spirit is here in verse 19. What did that talk on, on the vision? The service of the whole group. Three men have been confronted. Three men are today are with you. Is that what Mark said? So, verse, what is it? Verse 3 and verse 4. Sickness is gone. Verse 11 to verse 18. Sickness and tears is gone. Frustration is gone. This three personality will be released on our behalf this week. So, are you still praying? Who are the angels? Number one, who are the angels? 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 I will get it. The vision is for somebody. A spirit is service that God of Christ, my spirit, my salvation, is to be the son of God. Amen. I want to bless you. Don't so we see this all. He touched me. And the fact that Jesus touched her. Is he touched her? Is he touched her? Hallelujah. He will touch you. Come and say there is something now. With Peter, Lord Jesus, that you need to say, Lord, that there is something with Peter, that you need to say, 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 that you Something just impressed in me to bless you. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Do you believe that God can do something new in your resources this week? Angel will appear. God will give vision. And the Spirit will speak. Don't hesitate in the name of Jesus. But the prayer I'm going to pray is that if you are, if you are, if you are found wanting in the areas of giving, in the areas of prayer, please hear me very well. Hear me very well. Hear me very well. Make giving a lifestyle. Some of you who are not consistent in your giving this place, make it not just to this ministry. I mean, make giving a lifestyle. Hallelujah. If I preach to you my giving lifestyle, you will run and leave the church. I'm a dangerous giver. Hello. Hello. I went, I went, I went yesterday to see me on Facebook and see somebody. I came to our, our program. I just felt that let me go and see because I want to start a program in town and I want him to be financing that program every month. And I want him and his wife to be coming. So I went to go and meet him. I said, ah, Pastor, I've been trying to see you that I just got a contract with National State to construct a road. And uh, we are almost done with it. I wanted you to also pray with me. And he said, we are in need together. Am I the one that owns the job? Am I the one that owns the job? Now hear me. Whether I go there or not, that job will be given to him. 
It's not my but you see, God wants me to partake in the blessing. <laughs> that was it, you come to pray for him. That's what I like my point. May you get him this life of struggling. We want to destroy it today. Oh, that means it's too cool. Yeah. And and the kind of people you see always affect your finances. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Affect what you do. The man, the man that you are always seeing has a great impact on your finances. And that is why we are critical about giving. Make come to a point in your life that is nothing you cannot give to God. Hello, sir. Am I teaching at all? Every money that enters your hand, ensure that part of it goes to God. You have been eating food. Has anything changed? You have been wearing clothes. Has anything changed? And you have been any money that enters your hand. Nothing will happen to you. Am I teaching at all? Ensure that certain part of the money goes to God. This man has never met Christ. But how come that his life got his life attracted his attention. Why? Because he was a giver and he was praying. So today's service is to deal with, with, with people who find it difficult to give. And hear me that I made a comment and said, when money comes when you don't give, you don't give out, it will finish. But you see, when you give out, it finishes, you still have confidence in God. Because your confidence wasn't on that money before it was in God. Hello. You know, you know, I don't talk about that yet. You know that. Because in the New Testament, that is not emphasized. We give more than the Old Testament, 10%. Hello? Hello? We give based on love. But you see, I'm just allowing you to grow in that area. I want to just, I'll be teaching gospel to see if you can grow in it. Hello? Am I coming to that talk? Somebody sold this land in the New Testament and gave it all. Yes, I quite agree that, that giving has been abused by African pastors. Yes, I'm so about it. But you see, I'm not teaching you to even give now. I'm teaching you that giving is the way of life. No, it's not about even giving to in this place. That when you give, that is, hear me, that is the joy you have. Is that true now? How many of you believe that you can give God a millionaire before the year ends? See, I want to pray. No, I told you, Papa Solomon, you come on Tuesday. You come on Tuesday, I, I didn't pick a call. That was when I was praying for six forty to twelve noon, and before God a man, I was praying. I said, God, you need to change the status of church members. So if I'm laboring in prayer, asking God for mercy through Christ's death, because I want to, because your progress gives me joy. Hello, hello. So how many believe that you can give? <laughs> I know it sounds so stupid. You can give God one million this year. And mark, mark this day down. How many believe? <laughs> how many of you believe you can give one million this day? I mean, this year. I mean, between now and December, you can give God. You know, you cannot give what you don't have. What it means is that God is going to bless you. Hello, God will what? Yes. God will what? Yes. Won't it be good that if you have money, you do that money, you go to your village and get one school and build one classroom? Won't it be good? Eh? That, that you go to your village and you carry, you carry, God bless Pastor Yomi. Pastor Yomi, I love the man. He went to his village and collected people who have finished SSE and paid for jam. Hear me? Check those who give. Check their children. It will have impact on their children's destiny. Hello? Hello? I want to deal with I want to deal with the spirit of poverty, the spirit of struggling. Today is the last Sunday. My wife can testify. I've invested prayers by mercy. God will do something. For the last time, how many of you believe you can drop one million naira this year? You have lift up your hands. In Jesus' name. Okay, pray this prayer. Say, Lord, change my attitude when it comes to giving. Want to make it a prayer point? Just pray, Lord. Lord, change. It's not. Lord, change my attitude. Let's begin there. Let's begin there. Lord, change my attitude when it comes to giving. Who is not praying? Please pray. This is a very sensitive prayer. Lord, change my attitude to giving. Hallelujah. 
Lord, change my attitude to giving. We should not pray. Lord, deliver me from stinginess. Deliver me from withholding what I'm supposed to give out. Mm. Lord, no matter, no matter how small it is, I will start from there. No matter how small, I will start from there. Hallelujah. Lord, we give a praise to God. Lord, we give a glory. Lord, we give you adoration. Lord, we bless to name. Lord, we give a praise. In the name of Jesus, we give a praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Now hear this. Somebody shared with me. On Monday, I didn't pray throughout because I, I had to check my head. On Monday, I didn't pray throughout because I, I've been on a serious, massive prayer section. So I, I felt something in my body. So I said, okay, I need to be alive to preach to you. <laughs> The Bible says wisdom is preferable to. So when I check my system, I, I, I said, okay, let me just rest. I knew it was just stress of prayers. And I was supposed to pray for somebody who met me on Sunday and share with me about what is happening in the place of war. Hear me. Hear what? I said, I've already prepared my mind that, Lord, I want to intercede for this church member. On that day, I was weak. My body was weak. While I was lying down, you know what I said? I said, God, remember what that person is doing. Look, it's like, didn't get the message now. I was supposed to pray for that person to intercede, but my body couldn't carry me. And I said, remember what the person is doing to you. So it means what you are doing to God is more important than my prayer. Oh, you didn't get me, sir. Are you delivered from the spirit of stinginess? I can hear you. Yes, I can hear you. Yes, I was on bike one day and somebody carried me and the man was complaining. That was about 15 years ago. Yeah. School fees, school fees, no money, no money. Okay, I was not be married then. And I was having 3,000 in my pocket. I wanted to start buying blocks to build those pet shops that we have today. You got beauty with that money. And when the man was complaining, when I dropped, I gave the man the whole money. I gave him three thousand dollars all in my pocket. He said, Oh God, I'm not going to do machine today. I'll go and rest. I will cut this money and go and pay for our school fees. I said, Take this money, go and pay for our school fees. Praise God. Praise God. When I talk about, you know, you know, you know, last two Sunday, we didn't collect offer here. But in the other places, that kind of move of God, collect money. How many know that? Oh! But you see, we must come to a point in our lives that, that you are not giving for me. You are giving because it's a way of life that God has spread. That even though you are in your village, if I'm not there, would you give to your village people? You must be king. Oh, am I not complicated at all? Shall they be the man? Wait, wait, last week, I, I, last week, I've been carrying people this season of OS card of, of OS problem. Without quality money. You know why? I said, the best time to show kindness. I one guy last week, the enter as it's free. And the guy said, oh, man, I have learned something from you today. Tomorrow, if I become rich, I will do as you are doing. In six months from today, by the mercy of Jehovah, we shall hear testimony of financial tolerance. Yeah. Look, look at me. Six months from today, we shall hear testimonies of financial turnaround. There is somebody here that's supposed to give six of 2.5 million. I saw it many years ago. I've been reminded about it. So it means if you give to provide million, it means you are in millions of naira. I declare that vision will come to pass this year. In the name of Jesus. And I speak over you. Any man that has what you need to move your life forward, like Peter had what the Cornelius needed, I pray, let the angel appear. Let God get vision. Let the Spirit speak to him. May the angel appear to them. May God give the vision. May the Spirit speak to them. In the name of Jesus. service, we shall receive calls from people that will shock us. From people you know, that the man is too cold. From people you don't know, I speak to you financial miracle. Financial
financial favor. Financial favor. Financial favor. In the name of Jesus. Say, I believe. Hear me. There is somebody here that you are supposed to get a particular thing and it's been delayed.